All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about programmatic filtering in Domo Everywhere, specifically with the use case that we talked about last time in Salesforce. So to begin, here I am on my record, and as we saw last time, this dashboard is not filtered down to a specific account record, right? This is just a, a global dashboard of all our customers, and we would love to have it be filtered down just the, to the specific account. And we could do something like add a filter on here and then make the user click through it, but that's not a great user experience. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna be doing programmatic filtering, which if you're not familiar with this, programmatic filtering is basically just like PDP, a personal data permission. I like to call it row-level security, but basically um, all the data sets that are on, that all the underlying data sets on the dashboard are filtered down just as specific rows that you wanna show. So in this case here, um, if we do a, a practical example, coming back here, we have an account ID and we'd love to just display this account ID, the rows that pertain to that. And so if I come here over to my Salesforce data set that powers my dashboard and filter down just to that account ID and click apply, we can see it's gonna come back with just one row, right? Cause this is account records. We could also show opportunity records. And in the end, what that's gonna do is that that's gonna have us have a tailored dashboard that just shows the account record on here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's honestly pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do is we're gonna modify the Visual Force page and the Apex class. On the Visual Force page, we're gonna add in an additional element that captures the record ID on the page, sends it over to the Apex class, and then the Apex class, we're gonna modify a payload that we're sending over to Domo everywhere to include a filter part of that payload. Um, and so we'll walk through those steps and then show you the final product. So yeah, excited to dive in. So let's tackle the Visual Force page first. Um, coming back over to my instance, um, like I said, Visual Force page is HTML code. So what we're gonna do is on here, there's a form element that is hidden that is gonna submit a couple things. And so all we have to do now is supply um, a parameter that is the record ID that is gonna get sent over to the Apex class, right? Mm -hmm. So the Visual Force page loads first, it submits this form, sends it to the Apex class, Apex class does the magic to bring back a dashboard. So in this case here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add an additional input. So we'll just go input. And I like to make it type hidden, that way it doesn't show up on the page at all. And we'll give it a name, we'll call it record ID. And then the value, this is, this is where some of the magic happens. The value here, we're actually going to create a variable here. So with a visual force page, it's like a curly bracket and we'll just call it record ID and we will finish that and close that tag off. Okay, so let's take a look at that real quick and make sure it looks good. Awesome, looks good, cool. So let's go ahead and save that. So I'm just gonna save this page. And so now we haven't done a whole lot, right? All we've done is we're, is we're passing a record ID to our Apex class. And so now what we need to do is modify the Apex class. So let's come here and type in classes, Apex classes, and let's search through the many hundreds of Apex classes. Let's come down here. Makes you look through all these. Okay, our example controller. So this is where the fun begins. So down here, um, down here, this is where the this is where Domo is sending off our developer. It's sending off the API credentials and getting back a token, a bear token, and then we're going to get an embed token. And so. If you have questions about programmatic filtering, I'd highly recommend you check out this page here on the developer docs. But if I come down here, it'll actually tell me how I can add a filter to my payload. So in this case here, it's a certain, um, you're gonna add it appended at the end of this JSON payload. And it's a filter key that has then like an array of uh, filter columns that you use. And so what I always do is I like to use something like VS Code for formatting. So in this case, this was the original payload that we had from the repo, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in, you can see we add a comma here, put in filters, and then put in the columns that we want. So in this case here, um, you know, my dashboard runs off of Salesforce data. And so there's an account ID column that's gonna be exactly identical to the account ID from the Visual Force page. And so in this case here, I'm just gonna copy this payload. And like I said, formatting, and it, it's a beast of format, so I definitely recommend using a code editor um, like, like Visual Studio. But we're gonna come back here to our Apex class and we are gonna modify this. So we are going to switch switcheroo and click save. And then just come back here. I always like to double check to make sure it's saved. So let's let's inspect it, make sure it's all working well. Cool. So, yep, so that's looking good. Let's look at our filters. That looks good too. 
cool so that that honestly might be it let's 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 check real quick let's go to um a an account and let's go to classic burlington textile and see if it filtered down correctly cool that's looking different which is good and let's see if this worked as well Awesome. Yep. 9,000 employees, 350 million annual revenue. Awesome. So in this case, we can tell that programmatic filtering is working. If you wanted to validate it, you could, you know, look at your dashboard in Domo um, to validate that. So top learnings here. Um, I think the top learning is programmatic filtering. We can think of it just as PDP. Um, when you're creating a dashboard, you want to make sure that that whole dashboard is on a single data set. That way it'll be a lot easier to do programmatic filtering so that your filters aren't breaking. Um, you'll update the visual force page in the Apex class with a few few lines of code, nothing very heavy. Um, but yeah, hope you found this helpful. Thanks.